Ola Electric is not just an EV company anymore. It's now an EV plus an energy company. And according to Bhavesh Agrawal, this new segment could be bigger than Ola's entire electric vehicle business. This is our first non-vehicle uh, product launch. My personal uh, excitement about this product is uh, quite high. It's something that, uh, you know, when we founded Ola Electric uh, about four and a half, five years ago, it was always uh, in our vision that uh, Ola Electric is going to be obviously uh, India's largest EV company. But beyond that, it's also going to uh, usher in an, an, an era of new energy because automotive and energy always go together. And this announcement came at a time when Ola Electric's core business is struggling. Its sales are rapidly declining, losses are piling up, and the company's stock price is at an all-time low. Which brings up the question, is this a new gamble by Bhavesh Agrawal just to see if this works? Or is this a planned strategic move which will define the next phase of Ola Electric? And so in this video, let's try and understand what is this new opportunity Ola Electric is going after and how it can be bigger than Ola's electric vehicle market. Let's understand all this in this video of Backstage with Millionaires, a channel that's also part of Zerodha's Zero One network. Okay, to understand Ola Shakti, we first need to know a little bit about Ola's Giga Factory. See, Ola Electric did not start as just a scooter company. Its founder Bhavesh Agarwal has said from day one that he wants to vertically integrate and control the entire battery and energy stack. And the core of this vision is not scooters or even cars. It's the Giga Factory and the lithium ion cells produced in it. Let me explain how. See, for an electric future, whether it's the vehicles we talk about or homes which are powered by sustainable energy, the core is the battery which powers everything. And even in the battery, there is the cell technology. And so for Ola Electric, the aim from day one was to build a massive battery capacity, which will power all the different products it will build. And which is why the company built this massive Giga Factory. And here is what's interesting. The capacity of this Ola's Giga Factory is 20 gigawatt hour, but its two-wheeler segment will only use 10% of this capacity. According to Ola Electric's shareholder letter, over the next six to nine months, all our automotive products will migrate to Ola's in-house cells, creating a baseline demand of 2 to 3 gigawatt annually for the cell business. So basically, all the auto products of Ola Electric will only use 10% of this massive energy, which leaves almost 17 to 18 gigawatt hour of energy capacity. And to utilize this, the company has launched their new product, Ola Shakti. Our ambition at Ola is that we will not just deploy solar, deploy uh, batteries in India, we will actually build the full supply chain ground up. And this is the vision with which we had began working on our Giga factory four or five years back. Public always and the, the markets always used to assume that our Giga factory will only be for our automotive uh, uh, cells. But the biggest application for our Giga factory will actually be uh, grid energy storage and uh, battery uh, storage systems. See, basically, Bhavish wants to enter India's energy storage market, which is today worth 3 lakh crore rupees or almost 30 billion dollars. And Bhavish is so bullish on this idea that he expects that this new segment would earn a revenue of 1000 to 2000 crore rupees in the next financial year of FY27. And in a few years, the company expects revenue from this new business to surpass their entire automobile segment. So now that we have understood why Ola is getting into energy storage segment, now let's try to understand what really is this product and what problem is it solving. So this is how it looks, kind of looks like a CPU, but it's actually an intelligent battery energy storage system or BESS. In simple terms, its usage is like an inverter in your house, but Ola Shakti is much more intelligent, efficient and powerful. And yeah, it looks good too. See, right now the power backup solution for most Indian homes and small businesses is either a noisy polluting diesel generator or an old heavy lead acid inverter. These solutions are highly inefficient, they require regular maintenance, and most importantly, they have less capacity for the amount of space it covers. Ola Shakti, on the other hand, is a much better solution for the same problem. Firstly, it uses the lithium ion battery, which is considered far superior than lead acid batteries on almost all fronts. And Ola uses its own native built 4680 lithium ion cells, which gives it more control over the supply, pricing, and even the performance. Second, and this product Shakti is an app-controlled intelligence system, which gives you control of your house's energy demand and supply right
it through your phone. And finally, it has an option of solar integration in the system, which means it can connect with rooftop solar integration, giving you control of both energy production and storage at one place. Now, all of this sounds too good. And I also agree that this is a massive, massive market. And unlike automobile, there is very little competition in this sector, which gives Ola Electric a huge advantage. And other than being the first mover in the space, Ola has a few other important advantages as well. The first one is in-house cell production. See, the most important and expensive component of this solution is the cell. And Ola Electric is building it at scale in its Giga factory. This gives them firstly control over the volume production, but more importantly, it gives them a price advantage. See, today most lithium-ion batteries companies in India import them from outside. And they pay heavy import duty and supplier margin on it. And since Ola builds them on its own, it can give them at a cheaper price. The second advantage it has is its distribution and service network. Ola Electric has close to 4,000 service centers and sales stores in India. And they can leverage this network to sell Shakti as well. And uh, not just that, if ever there is a need to fix something, our Pan India service network will also be the same because the parts are the same. It's our Roadster battery pack. So it's literally the same service network, the same repair parts exactly the same that goes into uh, enabling this product for uh, the whole country. The same technicians who service your scooter can service your home battery as well. And that's a big advantage against legacy battery companies. And the third benefit that it will give the company is that it's a high gross margin business and can help the company turn profitable. See, EV business in India, especially the two-wheeler segment, is extremely competitive. And Ola Electric is finding it extremely hard to become profitable there. But this new energy business can help the company in that. According to Bhavesh, this can become a 40-50% to 50 margin business by next year, which is a big deal and is something that will greatly help the overall company to turn profitable. Now, with that being said, there are some big challenges in front of the company as well. And the first one is plain execution. See, Ola Electric does not have a great reputation when it comes to quality and performance of its products. We all have heard cases of its scooters catching fire or breaking down in the middle of the road. And even in the launch video of their new product, many people commented how this can catch fire and can burn the entire house. Now, of course, these were just meant to be memes, but it shows the larger perception problem that Ola Electric faces. The company has to genuinely work on quality control and customer feedback before rolling these products out in the market. The next challenge is the competition. Yes, it's true that Ola has a first mover advantage, but now the established battery companies like Exide and Ameron are also moving into the lithium ion technology. And Ola has to compete with these massive legacy players. And the final challenge is Ola's struggling automobile business. See, the thing about Bhavesh is that he likes to jump onto the new ideas without making the existing ones a success. For example, when his ride hailing business was slowing down, he moved to food delivery, then groceries, cafes, ultimately landing onto the big vision of Ola Electric. But even and then, in middle of all that, he announced his plans of building foundational AI models with Kritrim. And I don't know what's going on with that company today. My point being, Bhavish loves new ideas, but it's the execution that is the problem. And I wish the same thing does not happen with Shakti, and he can truly help in building a sustainable future in India. Anyways, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. Do you think this is a masterstroke by Bhavish and his company, or is it just one of the announcement that does not have a promising future? Share your thoughts in the comments down below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.